So Bandai Namco, aka Namco Bandai if you remember the 2000s, has hired you to direct the next Tales game. Never fear, I'ma give you some tips. Let's start with the world. There's gotta be two of them. Even if the player's party doesn't travel there, a separate world should factor into the main plot somehow. If it's a kind of lost or hidden region on the main character's planet, that's okay, but try to make it an alternate dimension, cut off from everything else after an age-old conflict. That's way cooler. And if you can toss a monolink or ancient race into the equation, even better. A dying race from a hidden world that needs some resource from the main character's world to survive? Hmm. Perfection. On top of this, you need an overarching magic system or artifacts of some sort to power basically everything in the world or act as a life force for the people therein. And if you can make this a direct part of combat, you're golden. Whether it's crystals that power a character's abilities or battle mechanics that draw from the magic system directly, you've got to make sure the magic system is integral to gameplay. See, you need some way of explaining how and why characters can use magic, but don't bother explaining how or why that magic exists. Everyone just takes it for granted. For the most part, your Tales entry should focus on human characters with no crazy beings unless they're part of the aforementioned ancient race or they're only in the game as a joke. Keep the furry bait to a minimum, this is serious business shown in Adventure Time, and also anything that looks even remotely monstrous must be pure evil. Which goes for humans too. If there's a big, fat, ugly guy, he's definitely gotta be a boss at some point. That's not to say only ugly characters can be evil, oh no, the main villain should be charismatic and charming. If he's got a pretty boy appearance, that's ideal, since only someone who's attractive could ever be a diabolical mastermind, just like real life. Oh, and of course, everything needs a slightly off-kilter name. I mentioned abilities, but nah, call special attacks arts and spell that with an E just to be different. Same with the money. Gold? Nah, it's gold, baby. Don't forget it. The stupider the name, the better it is. Alright, time to get into the real meat of the game, the characters. First and foremost, you need eight of them to guarantee there's at least one your weeb audience will latch onto and draw fan art for. First, you got your protagonist. Almost invariably, this is a male in his late teens since it's impossible for the player to relate to anyone older than that. Fans need a classic shonen hero to root for, and deviating from this can be dangerous. Make him a real go-getter or a reluctant hero, but either way, he's got to be relatively naive and clueless about the world, usually because he's from a small town he's never left, even though this makes zero sense. That's of course so the player can learn about the basic magic system and mechanics that literally everyone in the world already knows except the MC because he's a dumbass. Second, you need your female main character, who's a love interest to the protagonist, but neither will admit it until the very end, if ever. Friendship is the main theme, after all, and you've gotta make it as overt as possible. Unlike the MC, she'll be proficient with magic attacks instead of physical ones and probably has decent healing capabilities as well. If you can give her her own quest that she drags the MC into, that's the best way to create chemistry, since simping for a more knowledgeable and powerful girl is everywhere weeb's dream. Next, you need your battle-hardened, experienced teacher character. They'll join early on and provide guidance and knowledge of the world to help the party out, often explaining some obscure magical artifact or location, or maybe providing a helpful shortcut to some heavily guarded destination, but don't give them much of a story of their own. No one cares about anyone over the age of 30. Let's move on to the rival. The rival is someone who's a little older and more knowledgeable and well-traveled than the MC, who the MC inevitably fails to compete with. This is almost always a man, and if it is, he can be a lady killer, the comic relief, or preferably both. And if it's a woman, she's probably a well-endowed beauty with a bland backstory who the MC might occasionally pine for, but ultimately have zero chance with. Beyond that, you need a misfit, but otherwise relatively normal character tagging along, usually a magical girl or a nerdy kid, but not always. Don't go too out there with the design, we've got another slot for that kind of nonsense coming later. If it's a female, she's got to pine after the main character in what's obviously a one-way affection. If it's a kid, they've got to be as annoying as possible, and an annoying girl is the best of both worlds. Only flesh out their backstory late in the game after the player stops caring. Hey, you need padding to hit that 40-hour runtime somehow. 
All right, besides that, you'll need your rogue, or turncoat, if you will. They're gonna join up early on, but not immediately, and will inevitably betray the party for some other group or cause they were working with all along. Eventually, though, they'll have a final change of heart and rejoin the party, usually by saving everyone's life, and be forgiven by all. Friendship is key, remember? Don't forget it. In fact, hammer this theme home as often as possible, cause you know your audience is a bunch of maladjusted miscreants living in their mom's basements. At any rate, this is another experienced fighter and can sometimes overlap with the teacher character. Feel free to stray from the formula a bit, after all, but never too much. And we can't forget the wild card overpowered character. They might be an old veteran who's come back to settle a score, or someone much more important to the story. But they're only overpowered in story scenes, not in combat. Sometimes they're also the rogue character, but they for sure need a mysterious past that's best revealed near the end of the game. If you can make it part of a shock and twist, even better. Finally, you need a bizarre freak to round out the party. If this is a normal human, you failed. Make it some kind of robot, or animal, or alien to appeal to the small segment of the fanbase that wants to learn a completely different playstyle just for one unit. So, you've got your characters figured out, now what do you do with them? Why, skits of course. Lots and lots of skits that interrupt gameplay to make the player sit through mundane conversations about shit that anyone on a quest to save the world would go through, but usually gets cut out of games for a reason. You'll solve this problem by injecting a ton of humor, of course, though be sure to use the same jokes longtime fans have heard a million times, whether in past Tales games or any number of anime they've watched. Show how the MC is clueless about how people relate to each other, have the rival tease the MC and laugh smugly, and make the women compare their bus sizes constantly. There's no need to be original when you're trying to satisfy the same niche audience over and over instead of appealing to new players, after all. But what about combat? That's where players will spend most of their time, so don't make it too different. Copy the most recent Tales game, except throw in one new mechanic that ultimately doesn't change much, and be sure to include a ton of combo options with absolutely no reason to use them. That's to satisfy the hardcore nerds who like to waste time getting super good at easy single-player video games rather than dealing with the hassle of actual competition. On to dungeon design. The main key is to include super easy puzzles that require zero brain power but lots of walking from place to place so that there's plenty of battles to pad out the playtime. Make sure there's obvious switches that only do one thing and only need to be flipped once, with plenty of optional treasure chests that never contain anything worthwhile. In a modern Tales game, all the best equipment should only be obtainable through crafting or some other tacked-on, time-wasting upgrade system instead. And that's about it for dungeons. Add some beautiful background scenery that you can't access, and all is well. You don't gotta worry about the layouts at all. Straight lines and paths are fine. Side quests should be plentiful, but as mundane as possible, with crappy rewards. You don't want to give an unfair advantage to players who fully explore your single-player game. That would just be silly. Make sure the player can find lots of optional locations and buildings in each town, only to meet NPCs who make bizarre requests for stuff that they could have easily done themselves. That's how you make a good quest. Oh, and if you include ship harbors, make sure they all look identical. Reusing assets is key to pumping these games out every few years. In fact, that goes for the whole game. It should look like it belongs on a last-gen console, if that. Leave the jaw-dropping visuals to Final Fantasy. You're aiming for a less discerning, easy-to-please audience here. We're nearly done, but let's go through general game progression. You gotta start the player in some podunk town disconnected from everything else, have them make their way to the big capital city, get chased out and at some point have to sneak back into that city which is now well guarded, attain a ship or other faster means of travel long after they've already explored everything and could have used it, break into the enemy base and sneak through at some point, and eventually end up in a sleepy little town in a far off snow covered land as they near the final dungeon. But this is where major character development occurs, and naturally, what seems like the final dungeon should turn out to be more like the third to last. You need some big final twist that results in a couple more hours of gameplay just to generate more fan discussion online, coupled with a bullshit boss who comes out of nowhere to finish off a story that ultimately doesn't make much sense. The more confusing the dialogue, the better, and of course, be sure to touch on how important friendship was to the party's journey once again. 
Last and definitely least, make the music utterly forgettable. Hire a well-known composer, but only give them a couple weeks to be sure they'll phone it in. Standard BGM is all you need. Yep, every piece should fade into the background like it's not even there. Include a quiet, sleepy theme that plays in every single town, generic fighty music for battles, and above all, avoid strong, catchy melodies like the swine flu. If a song gets caught in a player's head, they might be humming it all day instead of playing your game. We can't have that, now can we? And that's all you need to satisfy Bandai Namco's demands for near-yearly Tales releases. You're on a tight deadline, now get to it! Thanks for watching. I'm just having fun here, y'all. I freaking love Tales, especially the skits, and I wasn't lying about it being my favorite JRPG series. I wouldn't want the formula to change much, this was just for shits and giggles. Subscribe for weekly videos about Tales and other RPGs, leave a like for that algorithm, and have a blessed day.